Cowell. Cole Cowell. Christian Pete. Right. A lot can happen between now.
in Durham, New Hampshire. Welcome to our coverage here today of the spring football, the annual blue-white game. And along with Justin McIsaac, I'm Bob Lipman. And it's a pleasure to be back with you. We're just a couple months away, Justin, from the start of the 2018 football season. And now, a uh, final little scrimmage here is uh, we'll put two teams together, Team Wild and Team Cats, and we'll see how they look. Well, it's a rivalry that goes back several generations, Bob, Wild and Cats. Anytime they get together on the field, you, you know, you can throw out the records, quite frankly. But, no, it's been, it's, it's been a long, cold spring, and now as we kind of uh, – or in the extended kick towards summer, you can almost almost smell football around the corner. And uh, what better way to spend a, a May morning derby day at, uh, at that than here uh, high above uh, Wildcats Stadium? It's been too long, Bob. It's been it's been too long. It's great to be back up here. What was the uh, official date? We were uh, December 9th. We were in uh, Brookings, South Dakota, as the uh, season unfortunately came to an end for the Wildcats in the national quarterfinals against South Dakota State. But another terrific run for what will be 20th year head coach Sean McDonald. Yeah, and a lot of some high expectations for the team this year, Bob. So many kids coming back, you know, not a, not, not really decimated by graduation were the Cats uh, uh, this, this year coming up. So it's, uh, you know, a lot of high hopes, and uh, it kind of gets going right here. They've had a long uh, month of practice, and uh, this, this, this puts a bow on it. And, man, I can't wait, can't wait for August to get here. Three captains for the Wildcats this year. The defensive side of the ball, the guys in blue, 58. Jared Keel, 91, Jawan Horton. And then the uh, returning running back, Trayvon Bryant, we're hoping to that this uh, story has a terrific ending as Bryant returns for his senior season. 5'8 uh, running back missed last season due to injury and looking forward to playing. He will not play in the spring game today. No, and, uh, you know, that was one of the, uh, one of the disappointments was that he was hurt last spring, didn't get to play at all. And I think really the, uh, you know, the Wildcats were, were hoping to get a big year out of him last year and just was not to be. Quarterback to start will be the guy that is going to handle most of the snaps this year, we would imagine, out of Nashua, New Hampshire. Trevor Knight had that terrific year a year ago. Where's number 18? They'll send Kieran Presley in motion to the left, and Knight's going long downfield, and the connection is made. <laughs> it's a first down to the 10-yard line. That. 87, Benyel Hill Jr., a redshirt freshman from Stafford, Virginia. Well, that's how you make an impact as a redshirt freshman, Bob. First play of this spring game, and what did that cover? Ten, about 60 yards on the pass, and when Trevor Knight hasn't missed a beat, that was a beautiful ball. Ball to the nine-yard line, officially a 56-yard pass play to set up goal to go. This is Team Wild with the ball first today. On the ground, good second effort. We'll push to the five is Brandon Gallagher, a junior, 5'10", 196-pounder. A year ago, Gallagher ran for 130 yards, had one big game. Yeah, the game against Towson, I believe it was. And, yeah, it's uh, he really ran angry in that game. And uh, you could tell Coach Mack liked what he saw of him. They played a lot of special teams thereafter. You know, they tried to work him in where he could. I, I expect some big things out of Gallagher this year. Third play of the scrimmage. Knight, the quarterback. And he'll keep it. Touchdown. Trevor Knight with a nine-yard run. The deke was to Carlos Washington, Jr., who was in the backfield. Yeah, that was a good fake. I was looking for the ball. I couldn't find it, and there's Knight in the end zone. And You know, did run Trevor Knight a ton last year, Bob, in, in the first game against Maine. I think was his, uh, his highest rushing total of the season, and and thereafter, he didn't really run the ball a whole heck of a lot. Wanted to keep him healthy. Wanted to make sure that uh, he was going to be around. Certainly a big question mark for the uh, squad coming into this year will be who will handle the place-kicking duties. This is the right-footed Jason Hughes out of Timberlane High School in New Hampshire who boots it through. And the reason why we're a little bit concerned about the kicking game is because of the graduations of both uh, Max Pedinoff from a year ago and uh, also the uh, graduation of Morgan Elman. Yeah, and, and down the stretch, uh, the kicking game had its, uh, had its scuffles, and that's uh, it's real important you know, just to be able to make those extra points. And if you have a guy you can lean on to, to hit big field goals, 
Uh, you don't need, you don't necessarily need somebody like a Chase Vinatieri of South Dakota State that can hit 55 yards, but you need someone you can rely on to go out there. And if you need to kick a 42-yard field goal, uh, you're not pulling your hair out. Hope just hoping it goes through. You want to be able to to take a deep breath and say, okay, I got someone I know I can rely on. So that'll be the question: who emerges from camp? All right, so the quarterback this time, this series, will be Christian Lupoli. And he'll run on the first play and gets run down by Jared Keel. And a lot of people get run down by Jared Keel. Interesting that uh, Trevor Knight's wearing the red jersey, uh, Christian Lupoli not. So he's eligible to be contacted, as you saw there. It's... Pickup of six yards, Lupoli. A year ago, 13 of 28 for 95 yards. Well, what a, what a second half he had against Central Arkansas, though, to, to, to lead that team to a victory in, uh, in the upset win. Run off the right side. That is Brandon Gallagher. Going need, to gonna need that guy to, who's going to be the short yardage guy this year. Maybe Gallagher fits that role nicely. Mm -hmm. As we talk about the running backs and Trayvon Bryant, who's not playing today, coming back off knee injury. Evan Gray is the top returning back from a year ago. He's now a junior. Gallagher, a junior. Carlos Washington, redshirt freshman. And it's third down and two here. Let's see if they keep the ball on the ground. And Gallagher. He's close. Not going to get the first down, though. 51, Stephen Harper in that linebacking mix gotta for the Wildcats. Going to give me a better spot than that. Come on, linesman. That's right. It's May. I'm already on the officials, Bob. Fourth down, one yard to go. Again, Coach Sean McDonald, his 20th season, 150 wins at his alma mater, 88 losses. UNH will open the season August 30th at Maine. Next week we're here. This is Washington, and he has the first down, spinning his way inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. A nice effort there by Washington. You can't even call it a second effort, Bob, because he, he, he never stopped the first one, but that's something the coaches will look at and – They'll bring a smile to their faces for sure. All right, how about the uh, offensive line, which graduated the, the two big guys from New Hampshire? Yeah, uh, Jake Kennedy, of course, the, uh, the senior uh, center, I should say. Uh, you know, anytime you replace a center, that's, that's a question mark, just you know, for the simple fact that UNH runs so much shotgun stuff. But you know, Will uh, McInerney, uh, the former Bedford Bulldog, uh, also – graduating so it's uh that line had some question marks they had they had their ups and downs last year but they played much better towards the end of the season at the beginning alonzo adai bringing down sean coin on that particular play on the uh, pitch out the starting center today is patrick flynn a red shirt freshman 57 from hanover massachusetts and again jake kennedy filled that role last year Experience on the left side of the line was 69, Jack Carroll at guard. He played all last year. Lupoli will keep the football and get back to the original line of scrimmages. Team Cats with its first possession, trailing Team Wild 7 to nothing. Trevor Knight, a nine-yard run on the first possession of the game, and now it's going to be third down. Yeah, and uh, Carroll played a lot of tight end last year. Didn't really, you know, you didn't didn't see him really as a pass catcher last year. So maybe moving him onto the offensive line gives you a little more experience. And where he was a blocking tight end primarily in any event. Third down nine. Lupoli rolling out towards the sideline, and he'll get rid of the football. Also on that front line, Curtis Linton Jr. is a redshirt freshman. 53 getting some playing time today. We'll pick up more as the uh, team comes back. Now it's fourth down, and uh, looks like they're going to go for it. That's what the spring game's for. And uh, I'm messing up my Cavaleros and Carols, Bob, there. That's what happened just there. But uh, Jack, Jack uh, Cavaleros is dressed as an offensive lineman today as well. It's the spring game for everyone, including your, your boy 65, here. right. He's out there as the, <laughs> right, the right tackle. 75 at right guard is Riley Burns, redshirt freshman. Lupoli under pressure, escapes, still going 30 down to the 28. It won't be enough for a first down. And we've got a new number four this year, and one that you're going to see on a lot of plays, huh? Yeah, Quinlan Dean. I mean, he's uh, 
it, it's hard for me to pick a favorite uh, Wildcat, but he was certainly in the top uh, top three last year. Just such a versatile linebacker. You know, he hits hard. He covers well. You know, he's a leader out there on defense, and he's just he's a sweetheart of a kid. Anytime you talk to him, he's got an, an infectious smile and an infectious uh, positive attitude. He's one of the kids, you know, that, that it really is going to drive the, the motor of that defense. First and 10 from the 27, he takes over the number four held by Captain DeAndre Drummond Myrie a year ago. Myrie has graduated. Trevor Knight will be back at quarterback of Team Wild here, second possession for Team Wild, and Evan Gray is the running back. To the right, seven to nothing. And quarterback on the option, keeper. Knight will be uh, touched at the 35-yard line again, wearing the uh, red jersey, will not be tackled today. Did they grab the flag there, Bob, out of his belt, or they just is a two-hand touch with, with Trevor? <laughs> yeah, he's got to keep uh, QB number one uh, healthy. That's why he's got that red jersey on. What a year for Trevor Knight a year ago. 3,433 yards, second best season ever by a Wildcat quarterback, second to Ricky Santos. And there's a new quarterback coach that we should mention here in Durham this year. As Knight wants to throw, and in and out of the hands of Nick Lubisher, will set up third down and two. The new quarterback coach is a familiar name around here because he was one of Ricky Santos' favorite targets, Keith Levan. Takes over for Ryan Cardi, who's left. Yeah, and Coach Cardi was the offensive coordinator as well, so there'll be a little, little shuffling of the deck on the offensive coaching staff, but I think the philosophy will, it will remain pretty much the same for the Wildcats. All right, waiting for the snap. Third down, two. Knight, pass, trying to get it out to Kieran Presley, 83 who's back and healthy and should be a huge part of the pass game. The two did not connect there, and it'll be fourth down. First quarter shows 3.57 to play, and we're just using running time here. It's 12-minute running quarters, and then uh, you know, the first quarter, the field goal kicking competition, Bob. I, I don't know if we've, uh, if we've selected our favorites for that yet. I haven't seen the odds listed. Maybe the favorite going in as the UNH putter is this guy, number 10, Drew Sanborn, and unloads one there. Fair catch called down deep by Neil O'Connor. Former Bishop Girton Cardinal, Drew Sanborn. I don't think that was Neil O'Connor, was it? Is he dressed today? I haven't seen Neil He's out not, there Neil, yet. Neil's not, well, I didn't think he was expected to play. Maybe just to make a fair catch there. Yeah, you're not going to see everybody uh, that you'll see on opening night, certainly today. But Coach uh, LeVan, by the way, on Trevor Knight, shows up every day with a great attitude, trying to get himself better. He's not just going through the motions. No, certainly. And you it's saw a big year for Trevor. He's really looking forward to it. Well, he made the leap last year. I mean, you know, there were some question marks when you – you got into uh, the season last year. You knew Trevor Knight was going to be the QB1, but how well would he perform? Well, I, I feel like he exceeded everyone's uh, expectations last season, Bob. All right, this is Tommy Herrian who takes over at quarterback now. He's from Chicago, Illinois, and what we know about him is that he was a preferred walk-on at Iowa and then decided to come here to uh, UNH where he was recruited. I was going to say, so he's at least familiar with, you know, the, the, I'm sure he – paid a visit or at least saw the campus and the coaching staff, so not entirely unfamiliar. It'll be an interesting battle for that backup quarterback spot, Bob, because Christian Lupoli proved he could, you know, get the job done when he had to. His only real action in live fire. He was in a couple of blowouts last year, but then got, really got into the soup, so to speak, at Central Arkansas and, and, and uh, held up himself well. So you have Trevor Knight as senior. Christian Lupoli is the sophomore. Stephen Hedberg who's from St. Thomas nearby here, and Tommy Herrian are the redshirt freshmen. Carlos Washington, Jr., didn't get much on the first run. This one, there's some pretty good running room off the right side that gets the 11 yards at a first down. Yeah, nice hole opened up there on that right side. Now, the offensive line last year, as we said, they had their, their, their games where you could build in holes you could drive a truck through, and then other times it was just tough sledding for the running back, so... Looking for more consistency this season, I would imagine. Right tackle is Jeff Carter. The right guard is Matt Masia. 
Lining up as a tight end far out to the right. Here is Gunnar Gibson, a redshirt freshman from Haley, Idaho. It's a great name. Gunnar Gibson under pressure. Quarterback keeps it, 25-30. And they're going to give him another first down. Pickup of 10 yards on the scramble. And that's a big part of whatever UNH recruits. And in terms of a quarterback, the guy's got to be mobile. Yeah, you got to be able to pick up a first down here or there with your legs. If not, you know, if more than that, uh, you know, you'll see UNH run that option uh, from time to time, the ride and decide. So it, it's got to be a part of your game if you're going to play a quarterback here. You can't be one of those old school, stand like a statue, Drew Bledsoe-esque quarterbacks and play for, for the Wildcats. Brandon Gallagher is again the running back. Harry in a little dump pass over the middle is dropped. The intended receiver was uh, Beniel Hill Jr. who had the uh, 56-yard reception early in the game from Trevor Knight. Wildcat schedule, and you sat down in your booth here and said, we've got six home games this year. That's right. Six home games in the regular season, starting in week two with Colgate here on September the 8th. Three straight road uh, home games at one point. UNHWildcats.com. UNH 9-5 and five last year, advanced to the national quarterfinals. Washington, he's got an explosive little step there, doesn't he? Yes. Out to the 39-yard line. Yeah, nice first step there. And, uh, you know, Jared Keel usually is uh, Johnny on the spots of the ball. He's making the shoestring tackle there. If you can get Jared Keel having a reach, you know you got some, some pep in your step, Bob. And Wildcats, I think, are excited about Trayvon Bryant coming back in, who really has a great first step and going to be an important part of the ground game. A year ago, the Cats did rush for 1,400 yards. Evan Gray was the leading rusher at 650. Washington is the running back. Oof. And he'll be hit. That was four. That was Quinlan Dean. Yeah, get used to that. Yeah, no no surprise. <laughs> when you take a look at the those linebackers, and again, we'll, we'll talk about the, the two guys who are coming back here are both terrific. And they're two of the best linebackers in the league in Quinlan Dean and Jared Keel. Keel will be a senior. Dean, just a junior. And Dean, a year ago, 124 tackles, yeah. by far the most on the team. That's the end of the first quarter. Team Wild leads 7 to nothing. Trevor Knight was one of three for 56 yards. The 56-yarder coming on the first play of the pass to Benyel Hill. Earlier today, the Todd Walker Teammate Award was presented in memory of former Wildcat wide receiver Todd Walker, who suffered an untimely and heroic death March 18th of 2011 in Boulder, Colorado, when he stopped an attempted robbery and saved the life of a woman that he was walking home. This year's recipient is John DeCaro, recognized for his selflessness and dedication as the ideal teammate. John is wearing Walker's uniform number 80 during today's game. Speaking of Boulder, we're going to be in Boulder this year for a game yes. against the University of Colorado. Second quarter of the spring game underway and Team Wild lead 7 to nothing. Well, I think what they're going to go with now, Bob, is the uh, field goal kicking contest. Explain what we've got going on here. Well, it's it's kind of a knockout competition. So you've got, uh, for your kickers, you have uh, Hayden Middleton, who is a former St. Thomas Saint. Jason Hughes is a uh, former Timberland Owl. And uh, Sean Coyne, who played at Portsmouth High. So you've got three New Hampshire kickers here. Your holders are Trevor Knight, Drew Sanborn, and Christian Lupoli, and your three long snappers, Kyle Reiser, Gunnar Gibson, and Jacob Bradshaw. So they'll... Right here, you can see 25-yard attempts. If you miss, you're out. And then they move back five yards and do it again, Bob. So they'll, they'll do this all night until we have a winner. I mean, if we have to stay till 2 in the morning kicking 80-yard field goals, we will. Hughes is through. Coin is through. And now here's Middleton. Good. Three in a row. Good. We have another kicker who will be part of the program and that's number one, Mitch McPike. He's from Birmingham, England, and is actually on the depth chart that you handed me a short time ago, listed as the number one kicker. Well, anytime we can get an Englishman on the team that can kick, you know he's got a soccer background if he's from England. At least I'm assuming. I don't know that for sure. But that's, uh, that, that makes me smile. So, uh, All right, Middleton has missed his kick, so he's out. Well, that, that's surprising because Middleton uh, – 
Hughes you. is Hughes is good. And now another field goal try, and that is through for Coyne. I saw so Mid we're we're left with Sean Coyne and Jason Hughes. Say, I saw Hayden Middleton hit a uh, a game-winning field goal at Hanover High School to send St. Thomas into the playoffs back in the day. A 38-yarder. So you know he, he's, he's a clutch kicker. Maybe the stakes aren't high enough here in this competition. From the angle, from 35, and Coyne has made his. Now from the right hash mark is Hughes. High snap, Sam Borden got it down, and the kicker boots it through. So the guys are through at 35. We're going to try now, 40. Now the stakes get higher. Those, uh, those uprights look a little bit closer together. Coach Mack has asked everybody out onto the field here. Uh, now that puts, you know, the pressure's on now. Are you gonna make some <laughs> t telling him to make some noise? Oh yeah, got to simulate game uh, game conditions here, Bob. Hughes from four. Oh, the snap oh, hit Trevor Knight in the helmet. Did he not ask for the ball? I'm not sure Trevor was ready for that. Kyle Reisert, the snapper, <laughs> is one of the brightest guys in the program too. Out of Plymouth, New Hampshire, a ball down, 40 yarder on the way. They're cheering. It's good. And through for Jason Hughes, right. sophomore. If I'm not mistaken, Hughes was a pretty decent running back at Timberlane as well. Listed on the roster here is a wide receiver, kicker, punter. And the Plenty kick through, 40-yarder. Good one there for Sean Coyne. Coyne is also listed on the roster as a wide receiver. We're going to try 45 yards. Let's do it. As I said, Bob, we could be here all night. What was the longest field goal by Wildcat last year? Last year, I don't think it was over 45 yards. 41. That's That sounds about right. No good. Left it out right, so Sean Coyne can win it right here. A field goal knockout. I mean, this is what it's all about right here. Is he selecting that right hash mark? He must be. Drew Sanborn to hold. So somebody rushes him here. Yes, sir. We got There's a winner. winner. <laughs> Sean Coyne, Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Rhode Island on the schedule, of course, this year. We've played Rhode Island, Maine, Albany, and Stony Brook every year as part of the CAA football schedule, and then when you factor in the rotating opponents, mm -hmm. this year for the Wildcats, back on the schedule is James Madison. Well, that'll be a huge one, of course. That's you know, anytime you play JMU, they're uh, they're the big dog in the conference, and probably the uh, I'd imagine they'll be the preseason favorite to win the conference again. Delaware back <laughs> here in Durham this year. That. That game should have some fireworks, Bob, based on uh, who made it into the playoffs last year and who did not and some things that might have been said in the media thereafter. That one will be fun. A game at Villanova this year. Now, do you want to tell the folks at home what the big part of that trip to Villanova is, the most exciting part? You're going to run the Rocky stairs. We may have to put that on the, uh, the UNH Wildcats uh, Instagram or Twitter feed. If I can make it up those Rocky steps. Team Wild 7, Team Cats nothing. Second quarter of the annual spring game. Going to bring uh, practice to a conclusion. This is loopily a little underneath pass. Didn't get it all the way to Lubisher in the end zone. The defensive back on the play out of Philadelphia, Sharon Whitaker. A redshirt freshman. Now, let's talk about the secondary because we haven't really brought them up yet. But what a group that this is expected to be. There's a new coach leading the safeties in John Bowes. No relation to our Bill Bowes. He comes over as a defensive coordinator from Fordham. And defensive coordinator John Lyons takes care of the cornerbacks. But when, when you look at the six guys who are back after playing a lot of time, Pretty good. Here's Lupoli on a run around the left side of the 20. And the six back, the safeties, Rick Ellison, mm -hmm. Pop Lacey, and Evan Horn. The corners, Isaiah Perkins, Prince Smith Jr., and Alonzo Adai. Yeah, the safety, yeah, all that uh, experience coming back. And they played pretty well last year as well. 
I mean, that's just uh, – that, that's part of that big expectation for this upcoming season is that consistency and depth, really, in the uh, defensive back position. Lupoli being given a short field here from the 25-yard line. Now here's third down and six. Ball batted up into the air and almost intercepted by Quinlan Dean <laughs> on the tip. And Q can't believe he dropped that. Look at him. He's down on the turf. He's, I think he was already looking at the end zone, Bob, before he secured that ball. So now it's fourth down. Dean had a couple of picks last year. Did he not? Is it two or three? Two. Isaiah Perkins leading the team with five interceptions. Hayden Middleton will get the field goal try here out of the Trevor Knight hole. Ball will be put down left side hash mark. At the 28, a 38-yard field goal try. Ball down, kick on the way. It's a line drive kick, and he missed it. It's a little different when guys are rushing at you. But that's, you know, that's finding the kicker that can give you consistency is going to be uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things for this coaching staff to solve. And got about three and a half months to get it figured out. John Lyons, as the defensive coordinator, has a lot of experience. Calls all three Perkins, Prince Smith Jr. and Alonzo Adai great athletes. Should show a lot of improvement. All right, new quarterback into the game. This is Steven Hedberg. Makes his first appearance of the game right here as they start from the 30-yard line at a run play. Ahead for Carlos Washington, gets five. Hedberg had a great career at St. Thomas. Just up the road in Dover. Won a state championship on this field, Bob, and played in another one. Second down and five. The passing has not uh, been all that much of a factor. Just that one completion so far in the game and under pressure, the southpaw. Able to get it away, but it falls incomplete. We only have one completed pass so far in the game. That was the 56-yarder on the first play. Yeah, it's a little surprising. There's only been seven passing attempts, but, uh, yeah, yeah it's, haven't seen a whole lot of uh, whole lot of completions. In I'm, I'm not sure if that's guys not being on the same page, a little bit nervous here playing under live fire action, but it's a little surprising. On the snap, all right, here's Hedberg. There's a completed pass, and that's going to go for a first down. And the receiver, and here's a story you can talk about, is Ivan Niamagabo out of Pentecook, New Hampshire, in Merrimack Valley. Yeah, and uh, that's interesting because uh, uh, Hedberg to Niamagabo, those two had some pretty good quarterback duels in Division II New Hampshire High School, and now you know one passing to the other. You and I kind of talked about it last year. Uh, Ivan got a little banged up. We, we didn't make some of the road trips, got injured. We said, you know, we got to – Got to find a way to get the ball in his hands somehow, some way. And it looks like the coaching staff might have agreed he's going to play wide receiver this year. Run play. And uh, moving ahead here is Eddie O'Brien, a freshman from Monadnock High School. Last game Eddie played was on this field. Pick up down to about the 14. This is the annual uh, end of spring scrimmage. We'll have uh, another little game before we get uh, serious about getting ready for Maine. That'll be in August. Quarterback takes. And uh, this time on the hesitation, ahead goes Gallagher inside the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. It's a nice little move by Gallagher there, a little step back, let the defender go by before he plunged ahead. And Last year, whenever Gallagher got the ball, he was just kind of like put his head down and try and, and punch a hole through the defense. Maybe they'll add a little something-something to his game. Third and one, right back to Gallagher. And that'll be a first down. And that was a little more of the Gallagher we saw last year. Put my head down and uh, try and stop me. How about the defensive front? For the Wildcats, another, uh, I think, important part of this team. Chris Ellis has the two returning guys at his defensive end spots and Jawan Horton and Kyle Reiser at the seniors. They should be pretty good. A lot of downs between the two of them, right? Yeah, Reiser was excellent last year when he was on the field. 
had a couple of injury issues, but when he's out there, he's a menace for sure. And J. Juan Horton is just a lot of fun to watch play on that defensive line position. Ball gets to the three-yard line. It's going to be a hole in the, uh, the interior, and not to mention a hole in my heart with Ricky Holt graduating. One of my all-time favorite just athletes to cover in uh, college, high school, you name it. Can't get him an extra year? No. Edberg out of the shotgun. The running back is Carlos Washington. He's chased, tries to reverse his direction back. First to get to the quarterback was Riley Ammerman. 94 forced uh, the running back to turn back the other way, and the defense comes up big there. It's third down. Yeah, not a, not a giant defensive lineman, uh, Ammerman, 6'3", 232, but you, know, you saw a little, uh, little burst there, Bob, didn't you, to get himself through the hole and force Washington to reverse his field. Third down goal to go. The experience, Ryan Sosnak is back at tackle. Elijah Lewis and Jacob Bradshaw may get a lot of playing time here. Hedberg will be brought down from behind. Play did not develop well, and he's tackled by 96. Robbie Schumacher, he's another guy with some experience. And Schumacher saw a little bit of playing time last year. Bradshaw, when he was in there, I thought played well last season. He uh, you know, had to call into service after some injuries. And when he, when he got on the field, I thought he, uh, he certainly uh, – Played well when he got the chance. 4.45 left in the second quarter. Another field goal try. Jason Hughes looking for the kick. Knight will put it down to the 20, 30-yard field goal attempt. Good snap. And the kick is good. So Jason Hughes with a 30-yard field goal to put Team Katz on the board. Tough to keep track of who's who, isn't it? Well, Trevor Knight appears to have uh, switched allegiances here. He was playing for Team Wild, now he's playing for Team Cats. I mean, there's just, you know, there's just no loyalty nowadays, Bob. We we'll do whatever we can, right? Kind of shaking my head over here. A little bit later on, when they get to halftime, they're going to introduce uh, all of the recruits, and we've got a... How many are here today? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 21, 27? 27 guys here today. I'll tell you one kid I think is going to be uh, at some point down the road an impact player is Christian Pete, and one of the kids they'll introduce. Well, yeah, just, it seems like your prototypical New Hampshire kid, a little undersized, under-recruited, but boy, can he play. Washington on the reception from Trevor Knight. Gets taken down to the 26-yard line. Riley Ammerman on the stop. And it winds up being a five-yard loss. So Ammerman, a couple of nice plays here early on. Second down and 15. Knight's running back this time is Evan Gray. Gray goes out in a pass. I'm sorry, that is Washington, 26, not Gray. Pass on the far side is incomplete. And again, not playing uh, with all the, the guys here today. Trayvon Bryant's not mm. playing. Neil O'Connor not playing. Malik Love not playing. So you, uh, keep the guys healthy. Get some looks at some of the other guys. Here's a touchdown Nick Lorden, right, on the right side of the field. We saw a lot of Nick last year. Six touchdown receptions, second on the team only to Neil O'Connor, who had the 10 receptions and nearly 1,400 yards. I think it was 10 catches on the season for Nick Lorden as well. So, Knight underneath pass, incomplete, trying to get it to Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Trying to set up a screen. They had blocking up ahead with the with Patrick Flynn, and it'll be fourth down. And Sosnak uh, on the coverage there and uh, delivered the hit just to make sure there. That's what coaches are looking for, finish your tackles, finish your blocks. And... Again, we'll come back to the recruits. I, I want to do that. One other, uh, in the change, we lost Ryan Cardi as the offensive coordinator. So Coach Mack has decided to go with co-coordinators this year, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it, it looks like the pass game uh, coordinator will be Michael uh, Frizzoco in his 11th year. Alex Miller will be the run game coordinator. So they'll, they'll be uh, the, the two-headed offensive coordinating monster, Bob Lippman. And Frizzoco, the... Pass coordinator, yep. 
Miller, the run coordinator. And uh, when you think about what this offense can be, need more points. And I, I yeah. think that, that that is a very important goal to set for this year. We know the defense is going to be terrific. Mm-hmm. But I think you want to see the offense be even a little bit more productive. Some games in there last year, you know, we went – didn't score against James Madison. Had 16 against Elon, 0 against Albany, 14 against Central Connecticut. Well, 21 against Central Arkansas. I want to get back to where UNH football can put four touchdowns on the board every game. Here's Gallagher. Yeah, and some of those, some of those scores were a little misleading. The, uh, the James Madison game in particular was one where no points on the board, but they were, in, they were threatening three, four times and just, just you know, miscues and uh, turnovers at the exact wrong time kind of messed that up, but you're right, Bob. Yeah, got got more consistency with uh, with putting up some points. Second down and ten from the forty-one yard line after a Brandon Gallagher play. Lupoli is the quarterback for this series. In and out of the hands oh. of eighty-seven. Flag Benny on the play. Hill Jr. and we've got a flag, huh? Play by the rules. There for your protection. Lucky Cisse is the sophomore cornerback out of Lowell over on that far side, number 20. Pop Bush, 45, a redshirt freshman. is in the secondary. We have two Pops in the secondary. Dean Adams. You can't have enough Pops on the safety. You just, you just can't. First down out of the 48-yard line. Here's Washington, 40, and down to the 35-yard line. Yeah, nice burst through the hole when he gets in the open field. A little shake and bake there. Kind of put the defenders on their heels. Get that additional yardage. Like to see that. So a guy who's going to get a lot of yards, I think, in his career here at the University of New Hampshire, Carlos Washington, Jr. They didn't burn the red shirt last year. They had him available if needed, in particular that Towson game that you mentioned. But Brandon Gallagher stepped up so uh, well in that game. And there might have been points where you were tempted too, because you know Evan Gray got a, had a real courageous year last year. I mean, he was he was nicked up almost the entire season, but really ran the ball well for UNH despite being hampered by some nagging injuries. Eddie O'Brien, a couple of yards, second down and eight, and we're down to forty seconds to go. And Not really in hurry up mode, are we? Well, it's a running clock, and, you know, if Coach Mack decides he wants to run a few extra plays here, I mean, who's going to tell him no? Sean Coyne is in the receiving trio on the left side. That includes Brian Espinette. The ball is into the hands and out of the intended receiver here and intercepted for the Wildcats. That is a 45 pop bush on the interception. Yeah, that was a fastball there, and I think that was Alex Hiltz wearing number 89. Kind of hit, might not have been expecting it, but once the ball gets tipped up in the air like that, it seems to be intercepted about a thousand percent of the time, Bob. So nice play by the defense. Maybe a little less mustard on the pass there is what you need. And we're going to call it halftime. We are. I believe we are. The recruits are coming onto the field. So we'll have more commentary for you once we get started with the second half of the game today. Now, when we say that uh, these are UNH football players who will be joining the program next season, uh, very often uh, in this program, guys don't play in their first year. Yeah, it's rare to see a, a true freshman get playing time for UNH. So I'm, I'd be surprised if... Uh, any of these guys were not redshirted. So you're looking at a redshirt year, but you get that experience being around the program, learning how it works. And when you're a redshirt freshman, you better be ready to go because, you know, football is a game of uh, next man up. Brett Edwards is listed as a quarterback in that group from Central Catholic High School. For some guys from New Hampshire, Tim Bouchard, a defensive back wide receiver. From St. Thomas, I that, imagine that's our St. Thomas. That kid is a whale of an athlete. He's going to be a, a one to watch as well. Yeah, Andrew was, Duvall from Goffstown. 
He, yeah, very good player. As I say, Tim Bouchard, last two seasons at St. Thomas was virtually their entire offense, running, catching the ball, throwing it on occasion, playing defense. He's good. Andrew Duvall of Gobstown. Joe Eichmann from Merrimack. Yep, very good player. Yep, Joey Eichmann. Trevor Mills from Kennett. Yeah, Kennett produces some very good ball players as well. You made uh, the reference to Christian Pete out of Portsmouth, listed on the roster as a defensive back. Yeah, Christian Pete, he, uh, at Portsmouth, he played wide receiver. He played running back. He was forced into action at quarterback a couple of games. A game at Bishop Girton at quarterback, he ran for five touchdowns his senior year as a quarterback. So he's just one of those kids. He's uh, he's tougher than a $2 steak. He works his butt off, and I think he's going to make a, a big impact here at UNH as well. From Timberlane, running back Jacob Post. Yeah, very good running back for, uh, for New the New Hampshire Owls. kid. Hey, we got a little soft spot for the guys uh, from the Granite State. Oh, absolutely. We get an opportunity to uh, to play here. We're at Wildcat Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire. Bob Lipman and Justin McIsaac, our season opener again Thursday, August the 30th at Maine. UNH. These guys are going to work hard all summer now to try to extend UNH's longest in the nation playoff appearance streak, which currently is at 14 games. And quite a season a year ago that ended with the team's uh, selection once again to the uh, postseason tournament. They beat the NEC champ Central Connecticut here. Had a, a terrific win at fourth-ranked Central Arkansas out in Conway and then on to uh, South Dakota State where they couldn't get past South Dakota State. And by the way, how about South Dakota State waiting a week later to turn the ball over ten times? They couldn't have done that when we were in, uh, in Brookings. It's not being a good host, you know? That's all I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> So good luck to all of our recruits. And get ready for a little bit more football here. And a few fans have made it out today to kind of look in on what Coach Mack has. Well, I mean, you can't ask for a better day to come out no, to, uh, sure. to campus, Bob. This would be if we, we get uh, home games like this. Next season, uh, I, it, it will not break my heart. 70 degrees at the first snap of the ball. Can't beat it. Well, you know how we finish. Cold. We, yes. had, some, we <laughs> had some rough ones, didn't we? I don't know, it was nice Al in Arkansas. Was it like uh, 75 degrees? Arkansas was fine. Albany and South Dakota not, were not. Not so much, no. Although I will say for being December in South Dakota, could have been worse. But Casey DeAndre taking over here in Durham as the running backs coach this year, getting a uh, a good opportunity. Yeah, Case was a graduate assistant last year, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, and he was he was everywhere. He's usually with us on bus two when we were on uh, bus trips or going from the airport to the hotel. And it's good, oh, it's good, good to get the uh, the alumni into the coaching uh, coaching staff as Coach Mac does. That's uh, you know, it's good for the players. It's good for the. Uh, Good for the program itself, I think. Also, it's pretty fascinating that the job that they give Casey is on the offensive side of the ball. When his entire career was spent as one of the best secondary men that we had. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's coaching's funny like that because you know if you look at the the coaching histories of a lot of guys that are in the NFL or even that are in college a lot, you. It seems like you end up coaching every single position on the team, don't you? Whether it's you know defensive backs coach or a tight ends coach, uh, eventually you kind of work your way around the horn. So it's it's good to learn all aspects of coaching. Night for Presley to start the second half incomplete. I tell you, that ball must have traveled fifty yards in the air, and Knight might have missed him by a half an inch. So that's a that's a pretty good ball there from the senior quarterback. Yeah, officially the numbers, Trevor Knight, two of six, 51 yards passing in the first half. Christian Lupoli, 0 for four, 
Stephen Hedberg one for two. We also had the uh, appearance in the game of Tommy Herrion. Carlos Washington Jr., the running back, eight for 46. And Knight will run. Is it fair that the quarterback can run, but you can't hit him? I think the quarterback feels it's fair. That's <laughs> Pickup of eight yards. No question about the arm strength of Trevor Knight. He can go deep. The That's question certainly. will be is, can the line get him the time to throw deep in this league? And, you know, Tre Trevor likes to take shots, too, down the field. So, if he gets the protection, he's going to be looking for home runs. Third down and two in the third quarter. Knight trying to run for the first down. They'll give it to him. I wonder if you'll see a little more running action from Trevor Knight this season. Maybe a little more confidence in the, the backup quarterback position. Maybe, maybe you run Knight a little more when, now that you've seen Christian Lupoli be able to get the job done when pressed into service. I think that, that Trevor cannot be scared of running the football. You know, when, when it's there, he's got to take it, and I think there'll be some designed runs for him. I do think that there will be more than there were last year. On the option, I mean, already we're seeing it more here. That's a play we didn't see a lot of last year. Hmm. Yeah, and again, Knight again running for a first down. Trevor Knight getting out on the option with uh, you know, with Carlos Washington beside him or with uh, Trayvon Bryant beside him. That's, uh, you know, pick your poison there, Bob. It was a pickup of 26 yards. Guys have been getting up real early in the morning for a lot of these practices, too. Six o'clock practices. And some it, weather wasn't pleasant for a lot of those either. But look out. Yeah, that was, that was Tommy Arian. He said, can I have one of those red jerseys, please? <laughs> I think that was Rob Iannarelli, I think is how you pronounce that. Iannarelli from Framingham, Mass. And uh, came in, I, don't, I don't know that Arian saw him. That could have been a lot worse. Kind of holding up on your own quarterback there. It's a good business decision. Quarterback will keep it. Pierre, uh, Kieran Presley was the uh, the guy with him over on that far end. Team Wild leads Team Cat 7-3. to three. It's good assignment football on defense there for UNH. Everybody kind of stayed in their lane. There was nowhere to go with the football, so Aaron just had to eat it and take the loss. So now it'll be third down. Lubisher and Presley. Come out as ends on the right side. There's a third end on that right side as well. Justin Malone Woods listed as a tight end. Harry in. Little dump pass. And it won't be enough for the first down as he gets down to the 33-yard line. Brandon Gallagher with 8.14 to go in the third quarter. So we're going we're gonna to hear your uh, tones again on our uh, radio broadcast this year. That's the plan. On the... Uh, UNH Wildcat uh, Football Network, brought to you by uh, Learfield. Hope you'll be able to join us here, but uh, just keep in mind we are on uh, the radio or the internet streams as we move through. Wildcat Insider Alan Lessels is with us here in the booth as well, and uh, he's going to help uh, get us to the finish line today. Allen has uh, written a uh, great series of previews uh, position by position throughout the team. So follow the Wildcat Insider on Twitter. Yeah, if you're not following Allen, I don't know what you're doing. UNH Insider. It was, uh, you know, when it, when uh, when Allen finally followed me back on Twitter, Bob, it was kind of like being uh, blessed by the Pope. It was uh, it's really a special moment for me. <laughs> 7.38 to go in the third quarter, and uh, we'll see how this uh, one sets out. UNH, a year ago, fourth in the CAA with a plus seven turnover margin. So the defense was very opportunistic. And that's how you turn the games against the big teams. Come up with those takeaways. Yeah, and really in just a couple of games where turnovers came back to bite uh, the Wildcats. There. The Holy Cross game kind of stands out. Some miscues. Uh, James Madison, they had some uh, turnovers that were, it was never a good time for them, but some really inopportune times for turnovers inside the red zone, inside the 25 and then it was just, it was just kind of a you know, the 
Cats got in a hole at South Dakota State and really couldn't dig out of it, so that was, you had to start taking some chances. But, you know, a fairly clean season keeping a hold of the football last year. Hedberg tried to get the pass out to Gunnar Gibson. It fell incomplete. Gibson will come tight to the line, now leaving three receivers over on this near side. Defended by Adai, 16, Rick Ellison, Quinlan Dean out there, and they'll run it up the middle. Carlos Washington Jr. gets to the 42 for seven. Washington's look pretty good today, Bob, huh? Nine carries for about uh, over 50 yards once the stats get updated here. Good, good burst when he gets the football. Going against the uh, linebacking core of Dean and Keel, and here is Schumacher who brings down, or rather if 94, Riley Ammerman who brings down Hedberg for a loss on third right. down. No chance to get that play going. Coach has got to like what they see out of Ammerman so far today. He's made a couple of nice plays. Third and five. 6-18 to go in the third quarter. Sherm Chester back for another season. The voice of God, Sherm Chester, behind the PA mic. The voice here at uh, Wildcat Stadium. One receiver out to the left. Is A.D. Brian Espinette. Hedberg pocket collapses, sacked again by Ammerman. Mm. Hedberg's Riley getting some uh, tackles for loss here, back-to-back -back plays. Yeah, Hedberg's got to get rid of that a little quicker, but Ammerman, yeah, he's uh, he's got a nose for the, uh, the ball carrier, doesn't he, Bob? 535 left. Ammerman, a sophomore from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Drew Sanborn will kick. A lot of talk, college and pro game, about kickoffs. Yeah, it's... Uh, what, and what it, to do. It seems like it's something that's trying to be phased out of the game, and I think that would be a shame because some of the, some of the more exciting plays you see in football happen on kickoffs. Uh, I, I know it's a safety issue, you know, trying to trying to make the game as safe as possible, but, boy, I, I just feel that would be a, a shame if you, if you took that play out of the game. And one of the more fascinating rule changes in college football is going to be if you, you can call for a fair catch of the kickoff inside the 25-yard line, mm -hmm. and if you call fair catch, the ball goes to the 25. Yeah, that'll be interesting just strategy-wise to see. You know, if, well, you, you, if, if you're kicking a ball down towards the corner, like to the 10-yard line, mm. you know, maybe you call fair catch, let it go back out to the exactly. 25. Exactly, yeah, that's, I mean... We saw a couple of times last year where uh, UNH fielded uh, a kickoff at the one-yard line, and it didn't end up working. I think the Holy Cross game, as a specific example, if you could call for a fair catch, get it at the 25, might have prevented uh, some bad things that happened. But, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the course of the season. Trevor Knight back out onto the field, sprinting towards the sideline downfield. He has Nick Lorden, and that is a catch by Lorden. At the 42-yard line. Kept his feet in bounds. Tiptoe on the sideline there. and Those two have some pretty good chemistry, don't they? Lorden and, uh, and Knight. Not a ton of catches last year for Lorden, as we said, but most of them were for touchdowns. From the 42. Presley in motion. Quarterback on the option. Get into the secondary and a good run there for Trevor. One other, uh, and this is pace of play rules. I don't think that this is going to factor in a whole lot, but after a touchdown, the play clock will automatically go to 40 seconds. You have 40 seconds to kick the extra point. What that will do is the celebrations are going right. to be toned are down. Be very short. Yeah, they'll be toned down quite a bit. And that, that, that we saw that rule in the NFL last year where you know, they, they let them celebrate a little bit more in the pros, but the caveat was the play clock's running as soon as, you know, as, soon as the play ends. Knight, look at that, reverses direction, Oof. comes back over the middle. I think I pulled a hamstring just watching that. Stopped on a dime. There were two receivers right there. I'm not sure who the, the pass was intended for. 87 was Beniel Hill, and is that Carlos or Nick Lubisher was there as well. Second and 10. 
Seven to three, Team Wild. And again, uh, the passing numbers are not going to wow you from this spring game. Alan, your you, your top two receivers aren't playing either. Malik Love, Neil O'Connor, not suited up for today's game. That probably has a little bit to do with it. Gallagher will bull towards uh, near the first down marker. Nobody in the game has more than one catch. Tried long, 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 twice. Worked once. Now, I like what Coach Mack did here. He had Trevor Knight running the offense, and then Christian Lupoli in the middle of the drive. You know, he says, get out here. You know, If you're the backup quarterback, this is the situation you got to be ready for. So get out here and be ready. First down, Gallagher. And I think if there's – and I'm going into my eighth year with the program. You're going into – another year and you followed UNH for a long time you really come to appreciate how much goes into all of those little things mm -hmm. we see it in particular on Friday afternoons when you're not doing a hard-hitting practice but you're going through 20 30 different scenarios yeah just you know any, any, anything that could come up on a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday evening they try to have the kids prepared for and it's just you know it, will UNH go into some games where the other team has uh, more talent on the field? Maybe. Are, are they ever going to be outworked on the coaching staff or in practice? No, that's, that just doesn't happen. And the coaching staff makes sure that that's the case. Pitch on the near side to Kieran Presley. Takes it down to near the 10-yard line. Clock shows a minute 45 to go in the third quarter. The only touchdown that we have seen today was a Trevor Knight nine-yard run on the third play of this game or this scrimmage if you will Lupoli is the quarterback Carlos Washington Jr. is the running back Lorden and Presley are the receivers right and we're going that way and the ball was tipped Presley looking for a penalty flag he's, there he's got one yeah that's a little bit of the grab uh, by uh, Sharon Whitaker grabbing the back of the jersey if you can get away with that that's a good move but the the back judge i think saw it there just kind of got him with the hook you know as uh, as bobby the brain heenan used to say bob if you ain't cheating you ain't trying so especially if you're a defensive back you got to get away with what the rest will let you get away with there have been a couple of penalties here in the scrimmage This is Team Wild with the ball. I have to keep reminding myself that because yep. the team that's had the ball all day has been in white because that's how it works. I was going to say, now Team Wild <laughs> is blue on the scoreboard but white on the jersey. I'm, I'm a little confused. Malone Woods was the intended receiver there, and the pass incomplete. Pretty good coverage. He was open, though. For you, know, you, throw, you throw that one into the right spot there, you get the score. 43, Jack... Uh, Jackson Hausman, the linebacker from Bishop Girton on the coverage. He was one of the two guys back there. So you go to touchdown Nick Lorden now with 40 seconds left. I mean, that's what I would do. On the right side. Waiting for the snap from Patrick Flynn. Looking end zone. Oh, heads oh. up. Wow. The German suplex. J.J. Jerome is a freshman linebacker, 32 from Monroe, Washington. A true freshman, too. That was, yeah, that could have been a lot worse. But J.J. Uh, Jerome, that got the sideline fired up, too. All the, uh, all the uh, defenders in blue there, Bob. They like to see that. Lubley had a second to throw the ball there, and then... All of a sudden, he was looking at his, uh, his his shoe tops. Got a lot of hair coming out from under that helmet, doesn't he? <laughs> Hasn't found a barber shop here in Durham yet. You, when you got hair like that, you don't need a barber, Bob. Loopily looking for Lorden, and he threw it out of the end zone. Mike Crawford, a redshirt freshman, had the coverage there. End of the third quarter. Well, Bob, I'm going to pass the baton to the UNH insider here. And uh, it's been, uh, been great to see the boys back out on the field. Been great to be high up above... Wildcat Stadium. I can't wait to uh, to get things going in August. August 30th, Orono, Maine. Well, we'll be here for the uh, the blue-white game in the fall as well. I'll see you then. All right, buddy.
29 yard field goal attempt. Sean Coyne won the knockout field goal contest. Trevor Knight puts it down and the kick is on the way and Coyne knocks it through. Giving Team Wild a 10 to three lead. We're, in the, we're headed to the fourth quarter now. Well, maybe the third and a half quarter, right? Third and a half quarter, something like that. We welcome the Wildcat insider, Alan Lessels, our good friend uh, up here. And uh, you've been out and uh, about here keeping track of this football roster of uh, nearly 100 guys. Been trying to do that. You know, we do that every spring. We try to put, put the position groups together and break it down position by position and kind of remind ourselves and remind other people, you know, just who's back and maybe who's gone and, and a little bit of prospectus as far as uh, what the season might look like. I think one of the, the most intriguing stories, and one it was one that was documented well by the UNH Athletic Department this week, is Trayvon Bryant and what he might be able to bring to the field this year. Yeah, and what a what a neat story that uh, Natalie Nori, one of our one of our intern, one of our students, freshman student, Guilford, New Hampshire, and just did a great job on the Trayvon Bryant story, just talking about what he went through last year when he didn't get a chance to play, and uh, you know, really one of the leaders of this team you know as you know Bob I mean last year he got hurt early in spring practice and uh, was not able to play much of spring knew that they knew he was going to be out for this season and was still elected captain may want to check in here on the punting game we have going too. the little more highlights for the for the fans and this the, is another uh, another knockout game all right so what we're doing here is uh, they have to catch the ball these are guys who maybe not necessarily would uh, would go to catch it. It seems like everybody here is rooting for Patrick Kaplan, who's a sophomore from uh, Franklin, New Hampshire. Drew Sanborn, the punter, is the guy kicking it. Kaplan <laughs> made the catch. Noah Noah Robinson, the offensive lineman, had his chance before that. Pat Patches Kaplan, whose whose brother was an outstanding defensive tackle here. Matt Kaplan, Patches went out and caught one. So maybe he's working his way up the depth chart as a returner. Elijah Lewis, Matt Batulis, and Ryan Sosnack are all participating in this game. There's a catch. That's Elijah. You're going to hear, I don't know if you heard much of his name today, but or talked to, said his name much, but you're going to be. He's a defensive tackle that's moved in beside Ryan Sosnack, and then a lot of expectations of Elijah. Now, he was also injured last year, right? He was. He played two years ago as a, as a true freshman. Josh Kenya somehow got into the uh, the competition, tried to make the running catch there. They didn't like that. <laughs> Sosnak, he's going to catch this. He's, oh, oh, I'm wrong. He had the hands <laughs> up, though. He had the, the fair catch called and everything. He was. So very quickly, it's down to Kaplan and Lewis. A couple of defensive tackles that. You know, we weren't expecting to see his punt returners, but maybe they, like I said, maybe they've earned spots now. <laughs> Kaplan with the catch. This is kind of fun. Nope. Lewis is out. So another Kaplan win. Exactly. Yep. The Wildcat Survivor, they call him. Yeah, that was, that was fun. The, between the field hockey game and the, I mean, the field hockey, the field hockey I'm, I'm, as I'm watching the runners go out, Bob, and the part of uh, Unity Day today is a 5K just taking off from Wildcat Stadium, but Earlier than that, there was a field goal kicking competition and then a punting competition, which or a punt catching competition, which was new. And it looks like we're not going to get to do a whole lot more gameplay, I don't believe. When uh, when fans want to uh, follow the Wildcat Insider Twitter, at Wildcat Insider. At UNH Insider. At UNH Insider. Yep, at UNH Insider. And, of course, that all of our stuff is on UNHWildcats.com which is our website where we put all our stories and all our information, which has been chock full with football this week. And 
We have track this week. America East Championships and track are going on this weekend, today, and tomorrow down at uh, UMBC, down in Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, lacrosse team played yesterday. Things are kind of winding down with football today and lacrosse yesterday. Track, uh, if things go right, Eleanor Purrier and Mike Shanahan will keep things going for a while longer. But, uh, but it is getting a little late in the season. What, uh, what happens if you're a UNH football player now? A few, you know, you wrap up your classes. What is a summer like before, uh, but until we get to camp? You know, they'll, they'll all, some of them will go home. They'll, they'll go home for a little bit, and then they really start gradually coming back, you know, and not too long from now. And they'll be, you know, I know you, most years there are, you know, maybe 25, 30 guys around, you know, by, by say, the 1st of June. You know, they work out. They spend time working out. They play catch together later in the day. It's all optional stuff but they'll lift and they'll they'll run and do stuff like that and then it builds as the as the summer goes on you know and get to july a few more come back you know and sometimes they're up to 55 60 people are here players are here you know as they head toward report date which will be you know either late july or very early august you know when they report so they're they're working together they're lifting they're getting bigger bigger stronger you know faster and uh you know more of the stuff is you know the the receivers and the or the quarterbacks and receivers will play catch and they'll do various things but without coaches around you know for those first couple of months and it'll be before we know it it'll be what the end of end of july it'll be time to come back and the game first game will be a month away as you said first game at maine august 30th on a thursday night just like last year open with a thursday night game which should be all kinds of fun and you know 10 days from that or nine days from that home opener against colgate right here and then out to Colorado. It's all full bore right as soon as we get to early August. And we'll get to see some new teams uh, back on the schedule this year as UNH is going to welcome Delaware back in here. Uh, that's a great rivalry from over the years. Another game with James Madison here. Villanova's back on the schedule. Yeah, the sched I think the schedule is really cool. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, before you start out, I, you mentioned earlier, I think, and you know, there are six home games. I mean, six home games. It's that's not. I mean, most of the time, that's there aren't six home games when you uh, start. It hasn't happened as long as I've been here. Yeah, so you know, they, part well, you start out. You've got, you know, you, you're going to have um, a, an FBS game, and that's always going to be on the road. So there's one, and you only play three out of conference games. So, you know, if you even if you're switching off, you know, it's hard to get that six game here. So, this is one of the years where we do have six. We have Colgate to start out and. Holy Cross will be in here, like you said, and then you get to the league games. Stony Brook, I mean, another great game. There should be another great game here. Delaware here after that, and then James Madison on November third. And James Madison on November third. I mean, you don't you don't have to have real blue colored glasses on to say that 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 could be an important game in the CAA. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously James Madison, you know, won the championship national championship two years ago, and you know they went to the national championship last year, and they they are. Do a lot of talking about there about getting back and you know getting back into the championship game and and this UNH team I mean as you saw out here today and I'm, I'm sure you know you know we didn't lose a lot from last year had a nice run at the end of the season last year and have an awful lot of guys back especially on defense and yeah expectations are going to be pretty high around here I think UNHWildcats.com Alan thanks for stopping by here for a few minutes uh, I'm sorry we took away your fourth quarter but. It's kind of been the M.O. here of this uh, game. We typically get about three quarters of action in. Yeah, we thought we might, thought we might get a few plays into the fourth, but didn't right. even get that. We got, But we did get uh, Patch, Patches Kaplan of catching punts, so that was a treat. All right. Thank, thank you for joining us uh, today from Durham, New Hampshire, for Alan Lessels. And uh, for Justin McIsaac, I'm Bob Lipman. Take care, everybody.